everyone, it's Shannon, and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. Did you ever wonder what it's like to be inside my crafting space or she shed? A lot of times you see me here, or here, or even here. But I've never really had the chance or opportunity to give you all a proper or in-depth tour of the inside or the outside of the finished she shed. And we have made a lot of big changes to the outside, so I want to start there. And I also want to thank Universal Windows Direct for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go ahead and head on outside. So if you are new here or you haven't been around long enough to see the full She Shed build, I want to welcome you. I did want to give you a quick overlook of this building process in photo form, but if you want to see all of the details, we did document that and I will put the playlist up in the iCards and down in the description box. You can see all the highs and lows and how it all came together in more detail when you check that out. But this is just a look at how this all came together. We did have someone pour the concrete and install the shingles, but other than that, we pretty much did all of it ourselves. We did have some friends help us with siding, which we definitely appreciate. Um, but here's what it looks like today or what it looked like before we got started on the outside earlier this summer. And for a long time, we used cinder blocks <laughs> to actually get inside of the she shed. We were in dire need of a porch on the front of this to just make it a little easier to get inside and look, make it look a little bit nicer and finish. So we finally installed some composite decking on here because it's not covered, so it will withstand the elements and just a beautiful finished new porch for this. Another big change was we also had to change our window out, which was really hard for us to do. This is a reclaimed old window that we spent a lot of time refinishing, but unfortunately the product that we used to refinish it failed. And you can see here, it started growing mold. So we had a couple options at this point. We could start over and start refinishing it all over again. However, it was looking like it was something we were gonna have to do every couple years. And it's a big undertaking. These are pretty big panes of glass and there are 16 of them total. You have to pick all of that caulking out and redo it. And of course, tape it off and repaint it again. And this time we were gonna have to do it standing up instead of having the window laid down that like we did originally or we could replace it, which seemed like the more appropriate thing to do. And this is where Universal Windows Direct comes to our rescue. Not only did they replace the giant window in the she shed, they also replaced all of the windows in our historical 100 plus year old home. And with that said, we were needing custom sized windows for our older home. And obviously this giant custom window that was in the front of the she shed. And that is something that Universal Windows Direct specializes in. We've also already noticed a significant difference in our electric bill because they are much more energy efficient. I love that it helps to muffle the noise of the road. So that helps with filming and doing these voiceovers for you guys. And it's also so much easier to clean and maintain. We were also really impressed with the staff who was so knowledgeable and answered all of our questions. And the crew was so respectful and so talented. They knew how to do their job. They did it quickly, efficiently, and they also came back and cleaned up everything. And by the end, all of our windows were done in a day. They did a beautiful job finishing everything inside and out. And then a couple things that were also important to us is one, windows add home equity to your home. And also Universal Windows Direct Windows also come with a true lifetime warranty on all of the parts of the window. And it's also transferable to the next homeowner for 30 years. And as sad as it was for us to see our beautiful old reclaimed window go, this was definitely a big upgrade and the ability now to open this window and let in some fresh air has been a game changer. So here's what that looks like on the outside after it was finished. We also added some new shutters onto our detached garage and put some on the she shed too to match. 
And you all know I am a sucker for a good before and after, so I couldn't miss out on this opportunity. Here's what it looked like earlier this summer, and now what it looks like with the new window, shutters, and porch. We still have some landscaping to do and a flower bed to build, which may have to wait until next spring. But for now, I am loving this more welcoming and cozy look. And now that I've given you a look at the outside, I wanna welcome you inside to my she shed. So when you first walk in, you kind of walk into a large shiplap wall with my creative space on the left and my large built-in fireplace on the right. I've always dreamed of having a fireplace and mantle, so when I had the opportunity to incorporate it into the she shed, I absolutely <laughs> went big. And if you look up into the ceiling, all of the roof trusses are handmade by us. They are built, sanded, and stained one by one. I believe there's 18 of those total. And the chandelier is a reclaimed piece that I refinished. Brian did an amazing job climbing the ladder a lot to get this thing built so tall and install all of the shiplap. He also finished it up when I was on a business trip and I came home to this gorgeous finished piece that, like I said, is just a dream come true. I love using it for adding some of my handmade items, displaying them, and also using it to give you all inspiration of how you can incorporate the handmade items into your own home decor. And yes, you do see a Christmas tree. I have another channel called The Cozy Christmas Cottage. So this Christmas tree is around about half of the year, so I can use that as a prop too. And so this space is very much multifunctional, which is what I built it to be. That's why I have that big blank wall, so I can use it for different holidays and seasons and accessories to display. This space over here to the left is my crafting space and also filming space. I make a lot of my projects here. At the top of these bookcases are projects that I made in my live craft nights. You can become a member and join my live craft nights. I'll have a link to that down in the description box you can check out. I went with a whole rainbow theme, obviously put a lot of the fun items out and some of the things I wanted to hide in those clear bins and covered them with scrapbook paper. I have everything out kind of accessible so I can easily grab them when I need them. And then I also have drawers on the bottom of these shelves so that I can hide some things away that aren't the cutest. And if you have any questions about some of the items that you're seeing in this craft space or what I used or where I got it from, definitely check the description box below. I have a full video on how I created the space and all the different organization items that I used. So I did a big video on all that. So you wanna definitely check that out if you're looking for organization ideas for your crafting space. These shelves are from Ikea. I love them because they were affordable and they also have these drawers in the bottom, which I said kind of hides those things that are not very cute, like my paints that are pretty messy. In front of this space, I also have a work table that I get a lot of questions about. This is a kitchen island from Ikea too. I love that I have those bins in the front and some accessible space to stand or sit behind in the back. Next to this, you'll see that ladder and I actually have a loft above my crafting area. And this is kind of serves as two different purposes. One, a hangout space for my kiddos and also it's kind of turned into a little bit of a storage space for some Christmas since I'm kind of overlapping seasons right now. But up there we have a TV and a TV unit that's also from Ikea and a fan. Up here also is an AC combo heat unit to keep the air moving in the she shed. And the floors, I have a video on that too. They are plywood and then I used a technique with Sharpie markers to make it look like wood flooring, but in the most cheap way. I also have a video for that, so I'll link that down below. But here's kind of an overview look from the loft, looking down into that big open space. Now the walls in the she shed are 10 foot tall and we did a 12, 12 peak on this roof. So it would be super tall. And the reason we did that is so we would be able to stand up 
easily and comfortably in the loft. We didn't want this to be a space you could just crawl around in. You can even see I have to stand on my tippy toes to touch that top gusset. And we just have this ladder to get up and down from. And we also have this barn door slash pocket door. It's an actual old, probably 100 year old reclaimed door that we picked up at a restore and turned it into a door for my office. So it is sitting on a barn door hardware. We had to kind of adjust and make work with this door. We also built a extra wall here so it would sit into and behind the craft area and inside the office wall. So it kind of just disappears and I can just pull it out when I need it to close off that area. And just let me take you right into the next space, which is my office. So this space back here is about seven foot wide and 12 foot long. It's been the perfect size space for all the different purposes that I'm actually using it for. So I'm actually sitting at my desk right now, voiceovering this video for you all. I have lots of paperwork, emails, so believe it or not, there's still a lot of office work that goes into creating on YouTube. So a lot of that happens here. I also have my printer and all of my office supplies kind of stored in the cabinets down and off to the side. And I decorated it up with some motivational sayings and some cute lights. Now, right behind me, you'll see three tall cabinets. And then this is where I store a lot of bigger items or things I don't need all the time. I have a trash can hidden in here, cleaning supplies and all of my Dollar Tree items, this is where they go. So here's kind of the mess, but all you have to do is close the doors and voila, it's like magic, no more mess. So I actually really appreciate this. It has worked out really nice. And then next to this is something that is a little bit of a secret. So I have a little window up here too to make sure this space doesn't feel so much like a cave. It lets in some more natural light. But behind this wooden piece is my electrical box that keeps everything running in here. <laughs> so that is just hidden by that wood sign. And then on the opposite side of that are some reclaimed cabinets that we made into wall hanging cabinets with some floating shelves in between. And below that is another work surface space and some Ikea drawers. This is an Ikea hack. I have a video on this too. Make sure to link that down below for you. So many videos you can check out after this if you're wanting more details. But this has been a really great space, whether it's for storage or whether it's a work surface or whether it's a planning site or whether I just need to kind of lay things out. Great work surface. And then I also have lots of stuff in these drawers, another little hidden cubby space off to the side for my larger flat items like cutting mats. So initially I had this as a six foot wide space, but I ended up extending that to seven foot wide. That way it would give me just a little bit more room for walking in this walkway. I can also easily open doors and drawers at the same time and move things around when I need to. All right, so hopefully I answered a lot of questions that you might've had about the She Shed in the tour video, but if not, I also asked you all on Instagram and on the community tab on YouTube for your questions about the She Shed. So I definitely want to go through those and answer those for you because there are some really good questions and ones that I get pretty much all the time. All right, so let's start with Instagram first. My first question is from Ashley Lane three. She says, how do you organize your craft stash? I hope I kind of showed you some of that in the tour with my divided craft spaces. But I would say the biggest tip that I have is to do a combination of closed cabinets, drawers, and open shelving. Put all of the things that you kind of grab often in that open shelving, drawers for things that you still need to grab quickly, but you kind of want out of the way, and then big cabinets for those bigger items. Then a question from Tara Lynn Cassidy. She asked, did you put any plumbing in the she shed utility sink or bathroom? And no, we did not. And unfortunately, the building permit that we had to get for this shed, as it is called, or as the town knows it as, we were not allowed to make this space inhabitable, which meant we couldn't put plumbing in here, we couldn't put a bathroom in here, we couldn't put running water in here. But one tip that I do have is I keep mason jars full of water handy. So if I need to clean my brushes really quickly, or if I need to add water to some paint or some adhesive to water it down, I can use that. 
and that's just a nice way to keep some water handy but not in a big like sink or faucet kind of way so it would definitely be nice to have running water out here but it's also nice to just kind of be able to run to the house when i need to and kind of get away it's kind of nice to just take a breather and take a step back from the creating for a second too then I have a question from Wood Whittle Designs and they ask, what size is your she shed? Like 12 by 14 and the 12 foot is correct. It is 12 foot wide, but it is 25 foot long. Now we had restrictions on how big we could build this. So that's why we went up because that gave us that additional space in the loft, but it also gave us this bigger, grander feel with the taller ceilings. Uh, but we could only make this so many square foot and it's about 300 square foot. And now we're gonna head over to YouTube for those questions. I have Jessica Berry here and she says, what is the square feet? It looks huge. So again, it's about 300 square foot and the reason it looks so huge is because our ceilings are like 17 foot tall. Uh, Mrs. Alma, who is wonderful and asks lots of questions here and leaves the most sweet comments for us DIY YouTubers. She asks, can't wait to see it. Do you wish you would have added a bathroom in the she shed? So obviously I kind of touched on that. Um, would it be nice? Yes, but again, it's not a big deal either with the house just right there. Uh, Lisa Palmer from The Front Porch Crafter, she asks, if you could do anything over, what would you change besides the bathroom someone already asked? So I think the one thing I wish we could have, I don't know if we can change it now. Um, the one thing I wish we could have done differently is I wish we could have made stairs up into the loft, but it would have taken some square footage away from the main area, which is why we did not do that and why we just built our own ladder to get up in the loft. The loft has kind of become more of a storage space slash hangout space. So it would be nice to be able to just walk up the stairs with things that I'm carrying up there instead of like hoisting them up over a ladder, having someone hand them to me um, up the ladder. So it would be a little bit more convenient. That would definitely be something I wish we could have changed or incorporated or figured out some way. Another idea we had was to actually put stairs up through the office, but again, it would have taken up square footage in there. So the ladder has become a good solution. It's something we can take away and put back if we need to, and it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Uh, Sally Salas says, that does not look like a she shed to me. That fireplace is huge. <laughs> yes, the fireplace is huge. I initially wanted to put the door on this side and then came across a photo of a gorgeous fireplace similar to this one and moved the door to the side so we could install this fireplace and built in here. And I'm so glad we did it. Uh, it is a huge fireplace, but it's not in a huge space. And to just kind of touch on the she shed part of it, uh, the town, like that's how we had to propose it as a shed, even though obviously it's not used like a storage shed. Uh, so I've just, from the beginning called it a she shed, but then I kind of started calling it a cottage for a while. And I think it's more of a cottage than it is a she shed because it's not a converted shed into a craft space. It literally was built with plans and all the details in mind before we even broke ground. So I don't know, you guys tell me, do you think it's a cottage? Do you think it's a she shed? Do you have a different name for it? Let me know down below. Then Trish Pipkins asks, do you wish you had installed a skylight? And would you add an outdoor patio or deck on? That's a great question. Uh, we did not want to put skylights in here. I needed some control over the natural light that was coming in. So obviously I want a lot of natural light, but in order to be able to control it, it would have been very difficult doing that with skylights. So what I did is I installed that big window, a door with full glass, also um, a couple windows in the office, but I also have some shades that kind of diffuse the light when I need it, or I can close it off altogether and use artificial lighting. So lighting is a big thing. I can adjust it with the camera. I can adjust it in my editing software, but I always try to use natural light from the very start. And then the second question is the outdoor patio or deck. And that is actually a part of our plan. So you saw the small porch deck that we installed on the front of this in the beginning of the video, but there's a huge space right on the other side of this fireplace where we have some open space and we would love to create a pergola out there, a seating area, kind of a fun outdoor hangout space. And that may happen next summer. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that because I definitely see that happening sooner than later. 
Kelly Roth asks, the fireplace is gorgeous. Thank you. How does it heat the space? So the fireplace is an electric fireplace. It does have a heater on it and it's got two settings. So it blows heat in here. We also have the AC slash heater unit up in the loft. So I use that. And then I also have a heater under my desk in the office so I can close the barn door, turn that heater on if I just need to heat that little space in there. Or I have these two that will heat the bigger open area out here. Brandy and Lauren show commented and said, I'm in the process of building my she shed. Can't wait to see the updates. That's so awesome. I feel like if you have the opportunity, that is so amazing. This is one of those things where I was looking out the, ki the kitchen window one day and I was working in the kitchen at the time and having to clean things up for dinner every night. And that's really difficult when you're filming, editing, and also trying to run an Etsy shop from your kitchen that you also need to use for cooking and when groceries come in or when it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? So I was looking out the back window one day and Brian was standing there and I said, um, uh, what do you think about building a shed? for me to craft in and he was like yeah we could do that so um if you have the opportunity i suggest it it was a lot of time consuming work so just keep that in mind it definitely did not happen as quickly as we had originally thought silver north commented and said i'm newer to your channel shannon this will be my first time seeing your space well thank you i'm so glad to have you here um where do you keep your completed DIY projects that you don't keep on display or use in your home. So that's a good question too. I get that question a lot. You can see, I actually do try to decorate with them. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this is from our wedding. Like I still try to decorate with the things that I use. And if I don't, um, I either give them to my daughter. She loves to decorate her bedroom. I donate them. I give them to family. Um, I've given stuff to the nursing home before for people to pass out if they want them um, that my grandmother is at. And I even give stuff to her so she can decorate her room too. So it all finds a home. I try to make everything have a purpose and actually be usable in my videos. Um, Paige Limbaugh says, the loft space you set up for the kids in the she shed is amazing. Do the kids come in and join the crafting or just hang out and keep you company? I'm excited to see the updates. Um, yes, I initially, I've said this before, this is not my space. I wanted this to be a welcoming space for the whole family. So I have a chair sitting over here. And so Brian comes in and hangs out. The loft is for the kids. There's a TV up there and bean bag so they can come in and just hang out. They do come in and craft with me. Um, my daughter comes in and helps do some of my work with me too. So this is definitely a family space. It's not just mine. Then Chris Widmore has a long comment that I want to read to you and also a question. She says, I can't wait to see it. Honestly, I'm just in awe of how clean and organized your shed is. My home is a hot mess most of the time because I work on one thing, then go to the other and keep bouncing between projects. It seems that I have boxes and shelves of half finished projects that I that I get excited about. Then I get excited about something else and I just keep going from one to the other. So my question is, do you ever, does this ever happen to you? Do you get excited about one project and then get inspired to do something else and keep jumping from one to another without finishing any of them? It would make me feel so much better if I knew I was not the only one. Though no, that's definitely something that I do too. I think probably all of us just don't get a chance to finish projects or they take a couple days. You know, some things need time to dry before you can deal with them the next day. That happens to me too, even in my videos. Um, you're definitely not alone and crafting is messy business. So my she shed gets to be a mess. My house gets to be a mess when I have to focus on filming or editing or whatever, then the house can tend to get neglected sometimes. I'm human too. We don't have time for everything and not everything is always perfect. So that's all I have for questions. If you guys have any more, leave those down in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you down there. Hit the thumbs up button on this video and please subscribe if you are new. As you know, there's gonna be tons of creativity coming out of this she shed slash cottage space. I appreciate every single one of you leaving comments and love here on this channel. I appreciate every single one of you and I wanna thank you for watching today. I will see you in the next one. Happy crafting.